it, it seems so possible to me to live a as happy a life as you can when you when you're old. I get so disgusted with some people that put no effort into it or take no interest in their community. You say we live in a very privileged place. So why don't we give something back? sticks like me that don't have an internet or a computer or and I can't hear very well and I can't see very well and I can't drive. What do you do when you get old? Right, you put a little bit too much air in here. What happened? <laughs> the tire came off? Yeah, out of the room. This probably capsulizes the what it's all about for us. How, like on an average Friday, how many bikes do you give away? I would say anywhere between 5 and 30. Yeah, In a year we do a little over 200 bikes. You can usually tell by the smiles <laughs> how they feel. And <laughs> what happens with wheels for kids stays in wheels for kids. <laughs> <laughs> I was a member of the Ottawa Valley Hunt Pony Club in 1946. And then we came out here, there was a bunch of us, and it sort of got started. And I could go out in the field and bring in the cows because it was a dairy farm. By the end of the summer, I could milk three and a half cows by hand. That's hard work. Joyce and I started taking the dogs into the Bethany. I just like doing things and getting things done. And yeah, I did a lot of pony club and horse shows and horsey stuff and I still I still teach of it. Carrots, onions, uh, parsnips, but well, we always do broad beans and uh, still gotta raise food for the whole world, you know what I mean? We've used up so much agricultural land that we've got to be kind of careful. I get so disgusted with some people that put no effort into it or take no interest in their community. I was with the Calgary Milk Foundation, president of that for eight years, and I mean, that's nutrition education and all that, and which was great. And then I started the Dairy Nutrition Council of Alberta, which was good, you know, the community association and the garden club and the historic society and the church and, you know, I mean, but, and the park floor sitting you know, on that board and it's... But how, how do you do all of that? I don't know. I sometimes wonder why, <laughs> how or why, you know. were talking about cows and grain the truckers were cursing the mud and the rain <laughs> so we have to come in for that awful brew and laugh and talk with the mixed up crew we live in a very privileged place so why don't we give something back we're, we're so lucky so fortunate ourselves personally our kids all still like us 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and that, you know, what, what's more important? What's more important than our family? See that happening, like keeping the history, but also passing it on to the next generation. I think it's worthwhile. I think it is really worthwhile to try and pass that stuff on. Size is the biggest factor, actually. People are very curious about it, you know, they're fascinated. We didn't want to take land away from agriculture. We didn't want to have a big developed place. We wanted to, to feel the, the values of, of the rural life. Every Canadian soldier got this one. 18 months service. I trained and then I wintered in Saskatchewan once. Uh, I'm proud to say I lived through a winter there. People were talking about sort of the subject of the moment was, what are you going to do when the war's over? And when it came my turn to answer that question, I said, well, I think I'll go to university. And some one of the older guys, he'd be in his thirties anyhow, he kind of grabbed me by the shoulder and looked me in the eye and says, you go. <laughs> I probably would have gone anyhow, but with that uh, uh, demand that I go if I had the chance, uh, impressed me and, and let me know that here's some guy, he's never going to go to university, yes. but he wants me to go. Absolutely. Yes, women are considered to be those that nurture, perhaps more than, than men do. So I think as nurturers, we tend to see things in a, in a different way. And whether it is for their children, or for their parents, or for their community, or whatever it is that they are involved in and believe in, they're determined to make it work. Participation is definitely the definitely the key, but you have to have the wherewithal to let people know that you're willing to participate. If you didn't stand up and do something, then you had no right to complain. So we started summer camps and we started environmental groups and we started Discovery House. We called it Discovery House because it was a place to discover a new way of life and it was for spouses and children and it has been enormously successful and enormous need and so we filled that need. We have bleached oat and branched oat and you know what? It feels good. because I came from the farm originally and that's all we had were case tractors. Oh, just keep busy, keep busy, keep doing things. <laughs> yeah. our, most of our joy and everything has been here on the farm. You know, we try to do it so that people can be healthy and, yeah. and uh, not too many additives to our food. And so much is imported now, and we don't know where or how that was treated. We feel it's a heritage site. Uh, we've got a lot of history here. We want to keep it alive.
some of our most enjoyable times were out in those fields and hills of fencing. And where the air was pure, you had wildlife springing up in behind the bushes and just, uh, it just the heaven that it was out there, uh, which prompted us naturally to think of what a good place to retire. And this just began our dream a long time ago. You know what it's like until you get old and you lose your mate or you get sick and you want company and um, to talk to somebody. The best thing I find when I'm lonely is to help someone else. You know, to think mm -hmm. of something you can do first. It doesn't have to be a lot. It's a contact. It seems a tragedy to keep building houses on this beautiful land and destroying it for its real use of, of farming or grazing or just looking at. Um, and with trying to develop uh, communities in such a way that they are um, communities that people can talk to freely and have some empathy with each other and you can accomplish this in the kind of environment that you create. Maybe people need those kind of dreams to uh, um, go to the next step, whatever that might be. You know? And if you don't get there, well, at least you tried. <laughs>